It is October 27th, 2020. And I was thinking to start this by saying some of my, let's say, blocks, saying the beliefs or what I feel I'm going through that stop me from bringing my own work into the world. And this is not easy. This is, this is a, and I don't want it to go into a poor me. But I, I would just like to put forward, you know, what I, I feel my main dilemma is. And when you've been working, let's say, for a long period of time on something, it becomes a way of life. And that way of life has sort of circles in it whether circles of incompetence or circles of um, emotional destitution. And it's like, if you're an independent and you're by yourself, you're either not getting the feedback or the help that you need to, let's say, bring whatever it is that you want to bring into the world. And if that goes on for long enough, sort of mindset develops of not really wanting to bring it into the world because there's a, uh, there's an anger and there's a frustration because you feel at some point that you've shown enough people, you've talked about it enough, that somebody is gonna get the idea that what you have has a lot of value. But you may not be talking to the right people and you may not give the right presentation, put out everything together into a presentation. And I've done neither. I haven't brought it in front of the right people and I haven't made a big presentation with all the work that I have. And I feel I have a, what could be scaled up to be a planetary operating system that could be used to run countries, that could be used to run communities, could be used to run organizations, a person's life, anybody. It's scalable. And it's unlike anything that I've seen out there. And it's working within me but part of the, the dilemma is it's a team-based system, a community-based thinking system and communication system. And if other people don't understand it or they're not using it with you, it's just a lone inventor by themselves. So lately I've been making the videos to explain it. And I'm actually trying to start at the beginning and put it in simple steps in a manner that hopefully will work for everybody. And I haven't done this in 25 years. I haven't actually sat down and wrote and explained how it worked and what it was. I attempted a while back with one paper, but I found it so difficult. There were so many parts. I got overwhelmed and then just stopped. And then I do a piece here and a piece here. And I just, you know, I, I have a habit of incompletion if I'm honest about things. And if I'm honest about things, I have to be honest about a lot of things because people may look at my life and go, you know what, that guy, the guy who thinks he's a wizard, the guy who dresses funny, the guy's always complaining about the government. But I'm working full time for the most part, funded by myself. On a methodology to redefine and redesign our society. And in a manner that can take into account how it is right now, but also to start to build new infrastructure that at some point will be the infrastructure that can host a new paradigm economic system. And this sounds 
impossible. And this sounds way out of my league. Because I, I haven't taken the normal route like most people would take. And most of my work has been done in coffee shops with a pen and paper mapping. And it's quite an unexciting story in between quite a few strange occurrences that changed how I see the world, changed who I am. And if I call myself a wizard, I think it's because I always wanted to be a wizard. You know, I read Lord of the Rings when I was 13 and it opened up a whole realm of fantasy and wonder that I, I loved and I've loved ever since. And I wanted to bring that into my life. I haven't wanted to live the life of the corporate machine. And as a result, I've lived a life that has given me the ability to have lots of time towards design, but has also left me outside of the social circles of mainstream life and all the good things there. And so as an inventor, at some point you realize that your invention is right or true or on But you, you're probably at a stage in your invention where you, you still have a lot of belief in yourself and the invention versus times when you don't because you're not getting enough feedback, you're not getting support, you're not, you're, you're, you feel alone. And even the people that say they're supporting you or helping you, they never really ask what you need in what order and actually help to get it. They're usually in their own world, like most human beings. Most human beings are contained within their own world, but they don't step outside that bubble and they don't really know that. The mind is a fascinating place. But our species is under control of a part of our species that is psychotically insane in terms of its desire to control and manipulate the way we all live. And so I've dedicated my life to doing something about it. So I've got a way of organizing your mind that can be custom designed to any business and to create a value system, an ethical value system that is very specific in its organization. And when you set up this value system, it creates a field of realization that then attracts the experiences to you to realize these values. Do you want to learn integrity? Do you want to learn compassion? Do you want to learn cooperation? State that you value them. 
put them on a map and then see what happens to your life. It works. But the lessons aren't always easy. And you'll realize that this world is organized under different principles. And then you will see the divide grow. Because if you value deception, greed, manipulation, you can go in the old paradigm. But if you want a more loving paradigm, more peaceful paradigm, we have to build it together and we have to get out of the old paradigm. And it might be as easy as one of two doors that relate to this map. And this map is the mother of all maps. This map is the starting map. This map is your choice in the present moment towards which paradigm you want to participate in, which paradigm you want to support. And who are you in that? You know, we all need healing. We all need <clears throat> support for our trauma still trapped within us that still affects us and so what i started off in was <clears throat> the healing conversation of expressing some of the stuff that i feel i'm going through <clears throat> they're stopping me from bringing my own work into the world and i think that as an artist or inventor everyone has that and so i'm no different and to be sort of authentic and transparent, we have to speak our shadows sometimes and to understand their role and what they've done for us and who we are with them and why we are a certain way and how that relates to us as we speak our truth. Just as a side note, if you sense that someone is in a healing conversation and they're speaking to something that important to them about their past listen give them undivided attention and that will do more than anything the power of loving attention cannot be underestimated Space. <clears throat> so that the people in the conversation can express their pain I'd like to get out of that healing conversation. It can be a little bit uh, too much for other people, right? Especially in the news, especially in the media, especially when you're trying to find out about the very secret plan. So let's just change that and go into an investigation conversation. And I was just watching a video that showed this uh, son speaking about his mom, who's a conspiracy theorist. And he was on the BBC and, uh, uh, this guy saying that maybe half of Britain might have watched this interaction between this sort of conspiracy theorist lady uh, who was speaking at the crowd of 50,000 people in Trafalgar, Trafalgar Square and, this, and then her son who's basically calling her a loony and should be stopped uh, and he's being interviewed by the BBC. And so she's bringing attention to 5G and the connection with COVID and uh, the lockdowns, that there's nothing behind it. And the son is going, she's, she's crazy about this 5G stuff and she's crazy about uh, whatever she's saying. So it's, it's really interesting because now she's getting national attention and, but they're doing their best to target one of them and to just trash her. And the, the little bits and pieces they were taking out of the media they collected of course made her look out to be a bit of a whack job not quite but it's it's interesting that the corporate media never give the full context never try to really explain what's going on because the people that own them wouldn't like that i know you're still trapped in that healing convo wondering how i got you so depressed
I know what you're thinking. Is this a is this a real investigation? Is he going to ask some real questions? Actually, do some real interviews? Actually, figure out what's going on? Nah, I'm bored of it already. How about a story? How about a story about a place that has been long forgotten? That is, most people don't like talking heads, and for good reason. Do you notice how the mind jumps all over the place? You know, we don't seem to have much control over our inner environment, do we? Or do we? We just move about this way, that way, any way. Do you ever want to control your mind so we didn't control you? Do we actually have choice? Could there be some structures that you can use to organize your mind to totally transform how you see and think? In every video, there's some hidden treasure, there's some piece of the plan, something that if you watch all the videos, go through all the adventures, go through all the missions, you're going to put together what's behind all this. And when you do that, you will truly attain superhero status. Your mind will not be what it used to be. And another thing, you always have to have a level of sense of humor to truly understand the real mechanism of the race of the planet. Okay, I just loaded the timeout. Stop. You're in a conversation, you're going one way, all of a sudden, timeout. Just stop it. It's like in basketball. You take a timeout, collect your thoughts, go do what you got to do. And if you're seeing anything, there's a switch between conversation types. There's a switch between how it organizes our thinking and how it organizes our communication, how it organizes which conversation are we in, in the conscious communication card set or the conversational Kung Fu card set. There are 72 conversation types and 24 conversational killers and six meta conversational fields. It's a lot of cards. And you can switch. between these conversation types and change the nature of the, the discussion, change the nature of what you wanna to speak to people about, change the way you wanna to write to people, change the way that you move information. You just had a timeout, stop into an instructional. Now I'm teaching you how to use the conversation types. And so when you are able to hold these conversation types in your mind and use them, to get you where you want to go. Use them to take a group where you want them to go or where they want to go. Use them to write a novel. Use them to write a, a script. Use them to uh, brainstorm uh, a new way of seeing something. Use it to facilitate a conversation. Use it to facilitate a con conversation either randomly or by directly facilitating people through a sequence of conversation types that you design ahead of time. There's so much that you can do with these conversation types. And they will evolutionize our species in terms of looking at how we organize, how we speak online and offline together, and how to get more and more high value conversations for everybody involved and take us more into a world where uh, we're really using our reason well and uh, really looking to understand other people's points of view and really looking to find 
the nuggets of gold that we all share, that we all want, that we are all willing to agree to put forward and to get there together. If you notice, there, we're beginning to change the frames on the social media video conferencing platforms such as Zoom. And this is having a huge impact because I've got something giving me context behind me. I've got something giving me context in front of me. And having the ability as a user to change your frames such that you can design different layers of meaning into your video and into how you structure your uh, creation is a, a, a new fascination with humanity. And uh, it's, it's just going to explode in terms of the methodology of creating and seeing videos and, and how we uh, add in nuances to fully embrace higher frequencies of thinking in a manner that we can't even imagine now, but is coming soon. They haven't figured out yet that for the user to program the framing is what is going to be so important at some point. And it's going to go beyond just the visualization of how this imagery is happening onto the conceptual meanings of, of what you're seeing through. And that's going to be pretty interesting when that occurs. Meaning, you know, if you're looking from a Christian worldview versus a Jewish worldview versus a Muslim worldview, and you can actually change the dials on your software system to take that into account. That's what I'm talking about. Switch to motivational, to go to the core of what inspires people and gets them motivated. Language is a structure in your mind, but it's also the way we structure our interactions with one another. And we're meeting now on the interface, we're meeting on the screen and we're not meeting as much face-to-face. -face. This is where we really meet people. This is where we really come into direct connection and communication now. And so having control of one's conversation type and having control of one's framing of how you wanna be seen either aesthetically or with the languaging of the perspective that let's say you wanna hold in that moment. Who are you? What are you saying? You know, from what point of view? And knowing that, and then having a larger community of people using the same tools, but having multiple points of view so that you start to uh, register a more holistic way of thinking and not so confrontational because you, you truly understand that everybody's in such a different space. We need to come together in such a manner which we respect another person's space, but. Uh, have certain boundaries, like no violence, and let's say no name calling, unless it's really funny. I don't know. I have to train some people to enroll someone's interest into an idea such that they are an active participant. If you watch this video and you're seeing something new, where you're hearing ideas or thoughts that are in alignment with your own or sound true to you, and I suggest that you might want to contact me, Captain Sweet, to get some training on how to use these conversation types and improve your own conversational kung fu and to be a planetary guardian and to participate in the very secret plan and to pitch in towards a plan that has the higher good for the whole species in its heart to build a love-based paradigm as opposed to a fear-based paradigm. So I'm asking you if you want to participate. I'm asking you to really participate. And there's rewards for participating. Good rewards. I know I'm jumping around a lot. And that's probably annoying. But I'm trying to mimic the mind and the mimic how conversations between people change. They change direction. They move. They move between these different conversation types. And most of the time, we don't even know what's happening. So the conversation type cards are there for you to consciously see how to 
program or design conversational flows, conversational processes, train your mind to communicate in new ways. <clears throat> Communication is all about patterns. It's all about how do we see one another? How do we speak to one another? How do we listen to one another? And how do we get what we want, basically, utilizing how we communicate? And then how does that affect everyone around us? And how do we help get what the people around us, what they want? And that's a sort of a different society. That's a different world. It is a much more giving world, a much more uh, balanced world. We're out of balance. And if anything, these communication tools are there to help balance our species, balance us individually, balance our relationships, balance our interaction with the rest of the world, and do it in an, in an intelligent way. If you get humans in alignment with a cyclical pulse that has work involved and is aiming at the right things, you're going to see our species take off in a manner that is almost going to be unbelievable to watch. We have so much creative potential. It is astounding what every human being inside has waiting to be unleashed. Thank you for listening today. Thank you for getting the hidden messages. Thank you for participating in something that has goodness in its heart towards helping all beings. Have an amazing year. <clears throat>